For us to build this vibrancy of the market, we need the three key elements, which is, you know, you have to have quality issuers and you want a very diverse set of investors um, interested in trading on your platform. Uh, and then, of course, a very uh, fulsome suite of products so that, you know, it can, it can cater for the needs of different investors. So if I look back to the work that have been done over the years, uh, it's always surrounding these three areas, I would say. Um, and, you know, why don't we talk about issuers first? So we have been very fortunate over the years. We are, I think, the go-to market, right, for a lot of mainland Chinese companies looking to raise capitals, uh, capital for their growth. But not only that, we have always had the inspiration uh, and the aspiration to build um, a platform where not only mainland Chinese business t can take advantage of to raise capital, but also really companies from all over the world. Uh, and we were very fortunate that um, we have since last year um, the ability to include international companies listed on our exchange on a primary basis into Stock Connect, meaning that any companies around the world, so long as they are listed primarily on our exchange, they therefore have the access to the massive pool of investors on the mainland. And that's unique to HKEX. No other exchanges can offer it. Uh, and therefore, I think you know, this will be our calling card, really, as we continue our marketing efforts uh, in the area of uh, uh, listing applicants. So that's on the issuer side. Uh, and then on the investor side, um, we have been very active. And you're aware that you know, we now have set up offices uh, around the world, um, starting with Singapore in 2017. Last year, we've added uh, New York and London. So you would know, for example, uh, last month, we have uh, organized uh, or co-hosted the Capital Markets Forum together with the Saudi Tata World Group, which I think was very successful. Uh, altogether, we have about 650 attendees uh, at that event. About 200 of those actually flew in from the Middle East. So aside from the main stage event, what we did also was a set of bilateral meetings. In fact, there were over 300 of those, whereby we match uh, four sets of people, and they are investors and corporates from the Middle East. On the other side, we have investors and corporates from Hong Kong, China. And so you could imagine, right, once you have the dialogue started, there will be a lot of opportunities coming out of it. I know a lot of people ask, oh, when are we going to see the first listing you know, of a, a Saudi company you know, coming to Hong Kong, et cetera. I think it's a matter of time, um, but we, we need to lay the ground for it, right? So uh, last year, for example, we listed the first Saudi ETF on our market. That's the biggest in the world to date and um, the first in Asia. And it's a very interesting concept whereby the ETF itself is listed in Hong Kong, but underlying that ETF is actually over 50 Saudi Arabian companies. And therefore, if you think about building familiarity, right, you do need to warm up the market so that they get exposure, maybe not through directly investing into a company through an IPO, but you know, ETF, I think, is a good proxy whereby you can start getting that familiarity of a new market. Uh, for many of the investors on, on our side of, of um, the equation. So I think we're going to sort of continue to work on um, many other initiatives. Uh, we have a good foundation because we signed an MOU with Saudi Tadawal uh, back in February last year, right? And then subsequent to that, not only that we list this ETF, but we also um, had um, uh, signed out, uh, recognized Saudi Tata World as an exchange, uh, as a recognized uh, stock exchange um, under our rules, so that companies listed on the Tata World exchange can come to Hong Kong for a secondary listing. So all that, I think, are good steps towards hopefully uh, more connectivity between the two markets. And later this year, I'm going to attend FII. What is the significance of this particular mm. IPO for HKEX? Right. So you, you're right. It was probably one of the last uh, projects I worked on as head of listing before I became co-COO uh, at HKEX. Um, I think the significance is that uh, we are really trying very hard to make sure that we continue to develop our listing framework so that it stays fit for purpose. And if you look at the chapter, it really caters for 
companies which are in the forefront of technology. These are companies which are in the most exciting spaces, uh, which investors are really seeking after. So including artificial intelligence, quantum computing, new materials, uh, green technology. And I think by adopting this very bespoke approach, we're really um, uh, helping a lot of these future champions uh, get the fundraising at the, the best time that, that they need the fundraising to help uh, grow their business. The Hansen Index uh, has risen 11% during this period. Ah. The daily turnover on the SJEX risen 35% during this period. Mm -hmm. 19 IPOs, uh, not including Quantum Farm, raised uh, 817, uh, 8 or 7 billion Hong Kong dollars. Right. How many marks would you give yourself <laughs> Um, in this, uh, during this performance? Well, I, I celebrated my 100th day as CEO on Sunday. In fact, you know, I was very happy and we celebrated it by uh, me competing in Dragon Boat uh, race on Monday and Stanley together with my team. Uh, so we had a lot of fun there. Uh, I think uh, certainly um, we are seeing good signs, very positive signs in the market and, and I'm happy, obviously, very excited. Uh, and I, I've about my new role, and I think the last 100 odd days have been fascinating and very inspiring. Uh, I was doing a lot of listening, um, both externally and internally, um, and all for the purpose of really understanding what the market wants us to do and what my team wants me to focus on. Um, and so I think it's too early. The, you know, the jury is still out in terms of how I should rank myself. After all, it's only 100 days. Uh, as an exchange operator, we, we face a very unique set, unique set of uh, challenges. Uh, and frankly, we are operating in a, an environment where you know, things surrounding us, fast, they are fast changing. And therefore, when I um, think about resilience, which is crucial in our business, as a piece of financial market infrastructure, right? We need to stay resilient because the entire market relied on us. Uh, I want to make sure that we are able not only to make sure that we are always on, we do our job you know, the way that the market expects us to do, but we also anticipate changes and we get ourselves ready for those changes. So in a nutshell, um, what I think uh, I would describe our strategy uh, would be, first of all, continue to build on our China strength. That has been uh, our trump card and something which works for us. Um, so we need to make sure that we continue to play that to our advantage. That will sit in the middle of our strategy. I really think that the Connect franchise is such an important invention for our markets. The journey started 10 years ago, as you said. Um, and we started with one product, one market, right? It was between Hong Kong and Shanghai. It was stock only. Over the years, I think it is because of the effectiveness of this infrastructure, which enables connectivity um, from both sides, right? So uh, capital flowing into the mainland China through northbound and vice versa, capital from the mainland going through, you know, southbound flow through the connect, you know, into the Hong Kong market, investing in uh, securities listed there. It's a proven concept. And as a result, over the years, um, we responded to investors' demand, and then we continue to augment the program. So we have now Bond Connect, we have ETF Connect, we have Swap Connect, and very recently there was uh, an announcement from CSRC talking about also the inclusion of REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. So you can see the potential of the Connect program is quite limitless, right? There's still a lot of white space, as I see it, that we can continue to further enhance the product offering within the Connect franchise.